Election Day 2016. Today we'll go down in history. Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. Today is a historic day for this great country. <laughs> um, by the time I upload this video, which will most likely be later tonight, um, the world is going to be a very different place. No matter who wins this election here, there's going to be a lot of angry people in America and in the world. Of course, everybody knows the president is not elected. The president is selected. And people might ask me if I'm going to vote. And you know I'm not going to vote. You know, I've, I saw the movie They Live back in 1987. And before I knew what a Hare Krishna was, before I knew what a Prabhupada was or the Vedic literature was, I've heard of this term called reptilian because I used to follow Dr. York, Malachi York. Well, I used to follow Imam Misa before his transformation into um, Rabboni Yeshua. <laughs> um, <laughs> As-salam bil kharuf innahu ajib. So that means peace in the lamb, surely is wonderful. We've been through a lot of stages with that guy, but he taught us about the reptilians first. But Srila Prabhupada really drove it home for me. He explained that there's different species of humans. There's 400,000 species of humans. Some of them are called Rakshasas. They are literally man-eaters. Now, we don't mean like cannibals. We mean man-eaters. You know, a cannibal is a human who eats another human. But there are species who prey off of human flesh. Rakshasas are that species. Currently, now, this was back in the 60s and 70s, Prabhupada was talking about the Rakshasas and how currently the world leaders are all Rakshasas. So whether you vote for somebody in black skin or white skin or orange skin, you're still doing the same vote. Me personally, if I didn't know nothing about Rakshasas and different invading species on the planet Earth, I still wouldn't vote for the mere fact that none of these presidential candidates have spoke to issues that matter to me. I work in the education field. I see the suffering and I see the brain drain of our children. I really do. I, I see the difference between my generation and their generation. Although these children are socially intelligent, they lack moral etiquette and they really lack a strong brain structure. Like, like I said, there's a lot of brilliant kids but there's something going on with the brain. Like, they're not processing the information proper, properly. And a big issue with a lot of the kids right now is focus. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of those issues are due to the GMO. It's due to the diet foods that, that we have. So our children are suffering. And if our children are suffering, then the future of our nat nation will suffer. None of these candidates are really speaking about education. None of them are stopping the abuse of women and children in religious organizations and in social organizations. As a matter of fact, some of their greatest friends, like those, the family over in England, those, um, what do they call them? Saxon Coburg. The Saxon Coburg family is the German family that's running the throne of England. So actually, these Inglanas are actually Germans. You know, I'm not going to go as far as to call them Nazis and all that. I think it's Coburg, Saxon, whatever. But um, Queen of England and all of them, they represent royal families. And these Britishers are actually pulling the strings behind this American election process. And we do know that the Britishers, especially those in the governmental position, are big pedophiles. Just like the leadership of ISKCON has degraded into a bunch of big pedophiles. ISKCON knows it, you know what I mean? Um, the whole world knows it, actually. So no matter what religious, or, I mean, you could go, like I said, go black. Okay, you want to go black? Black power. Black power. Then go to, um, what's his name? Africa Bambada. He's going to rape your kids, too. Malachi York, going to rape your kids. All of these rapists around the world, you know what I'm saying? Because these are international rings and interplanetary rings of predatory species that have invaded your planet. And they will come, they will look like you, they will talk like you, they will smell like you, they will speak your ideology, they'll spew your, your idiot racism. Let me tell you something, I saw a video the other day where a black guy was accosted by a white guy. And the white guy was telling him, you know, it was over some, some 
road rage incident and the white guy was telling him, yeah, black lives don't matter. Uh, let me tell you why. Your people are not smart. I don't know what he was saying. He was just talking a bunch of peck of wood crap. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, it was lucky that guy was there because I would have humiliated that man so bad that I would have lost a lot of friends. You know what I'm saying? Not physically, but I, the things I would have told that dude. But it's hard to argue with a fool. And that's why I don't want to vote, man. Because I feel like I'm arguing with a fool. If I vote for Hillary, all she's going to... Let me tell you what Hillary's going to do, right? Because she's a corporate president. We have an emergency on the planet Earth. And it's going to bring us back to the children. Because I believe that education should be based on morals first. Just like in Japan, they don't give the kids any tests till the age of 10 years old, which is the fourth grade. They, they spend the first part of their education process to teach them morals and characters and how to respect other human beings. I like that. You know what I'm saying? So you're giving your kids a... In America, our kids ain't got no foundation. I'm going to tell you our kids' foundation. Video games. Minecraft, Fallout 3, uh, Call of Ops, Black Duty, Ghost Recon. This is our kid's moral compass right now. So the video games are preparing us for a, an apocalypse wasteland. So I already told my son the multi-generational plan that even if I'm not here, if I would un unfortunately meet my device, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, you know, I don't like that self-fulfilling property BS. But I just told my son straight up, you know, the multi-generational plan so that my kids will eat, his kids will eat, and their kids will eat. It's a multi-generational plan. It has a lot to do with purchasing land and making a sustainable living. We're not teaching our kids nothing in school. If you're teaching them how to read and write, but you're not teaching them how to push a seed in the ground and make it grow, how to protect some cows, how to turn the solar energy into money, how to turn the solar energy into usable energy, you're not teaching your kids nothing and you're not preparing them for the future. Hillary Clinton is a corporate entity. It is so scary that only a few companies now control all of the resources on the planet Earth. There's a myth. The racists have a myth that there's overpopulation. That's because the racists and the white supremacists just can't have any kids anymore. Their, their population is dwindling. So every time they see a black baby, every time they see a Bangladeshi, a Spanish baby, a Tibetan baby, a, a Asian baby, it makes them afraid because they feel like, oh, no, we're being surrounded. See, the truth is, with, with our European brothers and sisters, you know, it's, they have a weird paradigm in how they think, and that's due to pineal calcification. And this pineal calcification gives them an us against them mentality. First of all, they have some mentality that they are the superior race and that it is their duty to uh, force all of the members of the planetary society into capitulation and that we must submit to their rulership. I ain't with that. You know what I'm saying? As long as Sun Man Patu breathes and as long as my videos are out there, don't bow down to white supremacy because they ain't supreme. Let me explain something to you. When it comes to Hillary Trump, they're both blind. They both cannot lead other people. Once again, Hillary is a corporate president. When Hillary becomes president, and she will become president, do you know what's the first thing that's going to happen? All of the bees are going to die and all of the trees are going to get cut down. I always say this. If the rainforest, the Amazon rainforest produces 50% of the oxygen on the planet Earth and the algae in the sea is producing the other 50% of the algae, uh, uh, the oxygen, then that means once you cut down all of the rainforest, that's like taking one of your lungs out. 50% of the oxygen gone right there. And not only rainforest, but the first word in rainforest is rain. So you're noticing that as they cut down more trees in the Amazon jungle to support the capitalist machine, because to, to, to print paper, you got to cut down trees. To make money, you got to cut down trees. To build houses for this new rising middle class in Asia, especially India. I try to warn India all the time, do not become a capitalist capitalistic animal like America but India ain't listening they're trading their Vedic civilization for this animalistic barbarian savage outside of Yavana Malecha western meat eating child raping civilization if that's what you want India then you could have it if you Bangladeshis want to wear $800 sneakers you could have it 
but there's not going to be le many resources left for your kids. Hillary Clinton got her hands in Monsanto, or should I say Monsanto got their hands in Hillary Clinton. Now Bayer has purchased Monsanto. Bayer was already the largest pharmaceutical on the planet Earth who purchased the other. So it's like a snake who eats his own tail and he only gets stronger. So the behemoth is getting stronger, the Leviathan is getting stronger, and Hillary Clinton is the perfect person for that. Only difference between Hillary and Trump is degrees of honesty. Trump will give you his ass to kiss because he got so much money. But Trump is a backwards kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had his money and not his brain. Listen, people, buy some land. I'm not gonna, this is not a fair mongering video. I ain't gonna tell you it's about to go down. I'm not gonna prophesy what the future holds, but I could say that Hillary is a corporate president, so it's gonna be a lot more money printed. It's gonna be a lot more debt and possibly a lot more war. She is a total puppet and Trump ain't no better. He's just a puppet with no strings. So he's even more dumb because he don't have nobody pulling this. Yo, I've seen Trump waver on topics back and forth on the same subject in a matter of weeks and days. They're both idiots, they're both rock shashas. You could tell them I said that, you could show them this video. Obama didn't do nothing for black people. What did you really do? Did you at one time say shame on you to the police officers when it was known that they was wrong? No shame, no shame. They killing us worse. They don't shoot us like dogs in the street. Dogs get better protection than black people in America. If you kill a dog, you get five years. Look at Mike Vick, he was just having the dogs fight. And he got, what, five years? You can shoot a black man on camera, laying down in the street with his hands up, talking about, I'm on my job, and this person is a mentally ill person, please don't shoot them, and the police shoot you and your hands is in the air. We are treated less than dogs in this country. Don't ask me. Yo, let me tell you something. The other day there was an award ceremony for my son. And they did the, um, Pledge of Allegiance. I stood up. I didn't put my hands on my chest. I didn't move my mouth. I stood up out of respect. And when I thought about it, I felt like the Chinese lady who was sitting in the uh, doctor's office and every time they rung the bell, people stood up. But I stood up out of respect because I was fortunate to be raised a Jehovah's Witness where we wasn't falling for none of them Babylon holidays or Babylon practices. So I didn't pledge allegiance my whole life in school, you know what I'm saying? So it comes second nature. They taught us to stand out of respect don't disrespect, but don't honor that flag. And that's true, the only flag I, I honor is the flag of Han Hanuman, because Hanuman is a high grade devotee of the Lord. Furthermore, Hanuman stood for determination, sacrifice, and devotion. And those are principles that I believe in. So, right now in New York, we're experiencing a drought, and I saw this coming for years, because I noticed that the rains are diminishing. Now, there's something, off about Prabhupada's predictions about the end of Kali Yuga, but I don't think that Prabhupada's prediction is off. It's just that because of the speeding up of time, the first speeding up of time began with the tsunami of 2000, I'm just going to guess and say 2005, 2006, there was a tsunami. Uh, there was an earthquake that caused that tsunami, and they said what happened with the earthquake was that it suppressed the core of, it compressed the core of the planet, made it smaller by ever so many micromillimeter inches, and it caused the earth to spin ever so faster on its axis. This is what the scientists are saying. So they're saying the day is shorter. The Bible says those times would be shortened for the sake of the elect. So what we have a phenomenon now is that time has sped up. Also, if you look at the advancement of technology just from the 80s, I, I mentioned this in a previous video. One day I'm listening to mixtapes, the next day my homeboy got a portable CD player. Like it was totally weird, the jump that we went from analog technology to digital and laser technology, was a that was a quick jump, man. That was a very, very fast jump. Nobody sees that jump that we made. It was about 1990 because I was living in Brooklyn. I'll tell you exactly what year it was. When I saw my first portable CD player, it was either 91 or 92. I'm going to bet and say 92, summer of 92. That was when I first saw it. And like right before that, we was listening to Kid Capri and Ron, Ron G. Mixtapes. We went from mixtapes to digital technology. 
So there's definitely some manipulation. Everything's being sped up. You know what I mean? The time is being shortened. So this golden age of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not really going to last too long. I'm not going to say how long because my math ain't that good. But if you know the science of the spiral and ratios and the, nu and the number pi, you can pretty much figure out, out how long it's going to take for 432,000 years to pass. So we already passed 5,000 years of the age of Kali Yuga. Srila Prabhupada said two very important things that are happening right now. He said, at the end of Kali Yuga, the religion would be killing, that people are gonna kill as religion. That's what's happening now. The police are killing. If you look at the news, yo, let me tell you something, man. And this is straight to the Bangladeshi community. I love your tea, your Malai tea. I love your Shingara, your samosas. I love all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I don't like how you treat those Hindu minorities over there in Bangladesh. Because you know damn well when you see me come in your restaurant with my Joppa Beach, when you see me chanting Hare Krishna, you know the first thing you better do is smile. You understand? You better not come at me with all that stuff y'all doing in your country. Because if you send 10 black Americans over there as Hindus or Vedic students or as Hare Krishna, I know you wouldn't be bombing up them mosques. You wouldn't be bombing up them. Yo, they go around in Bangladesh and they cut people's heads off because they religious affiliations. Hindus, peaceful Vedic Hindus. The Muslims, the barbaric Muslims just get together and they'll cut people's heads off in Bangladesh. Why don't you try that in America? Try that with these black people over here and see what happened. Don't worry, you wouldn't have to fear Trump. Trust me, we'll chase you right into the water, kid, if you even make it to the water alive. So to the Bangladeshi community, y'all better chill with what y'all are doing. Because the devilishment that y'all are doing is no different than the devilishment that the Europeans did over here with their lynch mobs. And the only reason they're not hanging Negroes up from trees and cutting off Negroes' heads and genitals is because laws have been passed for the protection of the Negroes in America. But I don't like what y'all Bangladeshis are doing because y'all are cowards. When I see y'all face to face, it's all smiles. It's all, Salam Alaikum, uh, Haribo, my grandmother was a Hindu. But if you go back to Bangladesh, y'all gang up and cut people's heads off. That's the kind of animalism that y'all want to spread in the planet and call it religion. Y'all ain't no better than a white man. Straight cheese. I don't care who want to watch this video and call me a racist. Your history. Y'all had us as alligator bait. Y'all would take our babies and use them so you could hunt for alligators. But don't call me no racist. Don't call me nothing. Because I can't stop none of y'all from getting a job or living where you want to live. I can't force y'all to go. You know what's so funny, man? There's so many black college students out there. There's more black people going to college than in prison, but you wouldn't know it from the statistics. And all of the black college students say the same thing. There's always some BS racism on their campus. There's always some noose. There's always some nigger go home, spit go home. I mean, let me tell you something, man. The problem on this planet is the fact that the European left Europe and went to the rest of the planet. I was listening to Prabhupada's morning walks, a lecture, lecture number 92. I think all of y'all should go see that. It's called Modern Primitives. Go listen to that lecture. He says some potentially inflammatory information in that lecture. But I want you to read because when the audio goes off, there's still more things to read. But he was talking about how the Britishers rock. And he said everything short of calling them devils. That's why I like to thank Elijah Muhammad. I like to thank Nobu Ali for giving us a different perspective on the European and his modus operandi. This video is not to propagate hate. This video is to propagate reality that people would open up their eyes. Don't be ashamed of your native culture, but actually use Krishna consciousness to enhance your culture. Don't be ashamed of your demigods and your netaru. Use Krishna consciousness to enhance that and make yourself a better person in a better world. Start a multi-generational plan for the survival of your kids, a plan that does not depend on survival in this capitalistic system. Hillary does not have your future in her hands. Trump does not have your future in your hands. Only you and Krishna have your future in your hands. There are no easy solutions to what's going on, but what we do need is either intelligent leadership or someone with intelligence in the ears of the leaders. 
Hiram Montserrat. You've been inboxing me, asking me for for whatever, your, your assistance or presence, whatever. Everybody in East Elmhurst right now is mad because of the homeless situation and that Mayor de Blasio is dumping all of these homeless shelters in East Elmhurst. Well, let's look at it from a business owner standpoint of view because we got to be fair. First of all, if I was a business owner, I used to live in a shelter, by the way, so you're not going to get me on no picket line fighting against shelters when I needed a shelter at one point in my life. Here's the facts. Here's the truth. Homelessness will proliferate. The amount of shelters in New York City will rise. When I was in the shelter in 2010, it was about 36,000 families in the shelter system. Here it is, 2016, six years later, it's 60,000 families in the New York City shelter system. I'm a business owner who owns a hotel. My hotel does at best 40 to 70% occupancy, except on busy season. But there's so many homeless people out there that if I just simply turn my, if I turn my hotel into a shelter, I'm guaranteed 100% occupancy because there's so many poor people in New York City, so many working poor. We're not even talking about people sitting down collecting welfare. We're talking about hardworking people who can't even pay their friggin' rent. They're making $20 an hour and still can't afford their rent and their Metro card and their food bills and their school bills. Yo, it's so real out there right now. Politicians are sucking us dry in the form of taxes. All of this is in the 12th canto of the Bhagwat Purana or Srimad Bhagwatam. So I'm the hotel owner now and I say I could get, I could turn my hotel into a shelter and get $2,000 a month off of each room. Yo, yo, right now, Hotel owners are salivating at the prospect of turning their their home um, hotel into a shelter because it's 100 percent occupy. You can't lose, and the money is guaranteed because it's coming from the city in the form of welfare. So let me tell you something, Hiram Montserrat, and to my good friend Talia Wolfka, don't fight against the the shelters. Fight against them politicians y'all are voting for because those politicians are doing nothing to stem the tide of homelessness. They're not increasing the education. They're, in, they're, they're funneling the money to the private prison facilities. So don't get mad at the homeless because it ain't their fault. They got to live somewhere. And God forbid the same situations that they're going through could happen to you. So Hiram Montserrat, Talia Wolfka. Fight against the things that cause homelessness in the first place. Once again, you can't put a bandage on a wound if the wound is opening from the inside. You got to go inside and correct the problem. If you got moles popping up on your skin, there's something going on in your blood. You can't just put Nixoderm on the top. It'll go away, but it's going to come back because there's something going on with the blood. You got to address the root. Nobody's fighting the root because nobody, everybody's either afraid or these politicians got them in their pockets. I'm a free man. I'm a free living entity. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not nobody's agent. If people give me money, that's through donation, through the love and kindness of their heart. But there's no agency that's saying we're supporting Caprice Scott or we're taking care of Dr. Caprice so we control what he says. Iskhan can't even say that. I didn't get initiated in Iskhan. My, my spirit was telling me, yo, go. There's something there for you. Listen to Prabhupada. Apply his teachings as much as you can. But my instincts was like, don't get initiated. At least not yet. And the more and more I learn, the more and more I learn is that Iskhan is just like the Catholic Church. So the philosophy is forever. Krishna is forever. But the way we color Krishna, our crayons, is temporary. Temporary. And that's why Krishna said, abandon all forms of religion and just surrender to me. I'll take care of you. I'll hold you down. Don't worry about none of that. There's so much things on my mind. I'm sorry that I couldn't be more scientific and, and breaking stuff down. This is just a, a parent speaking from the heart that my country is in trouble. My people are in trouble. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to take a stand for my people in this time. The blessings I have are not only for the people in the diaspora, it is for the people of the whole world. But Sizzler said, dance a yard before you dance abroad. You have to dance at home. Charity begins at home. So I'm going to work with my people first. And nobody can tell me don't work with my people and that you're on a bodily platform. My people need it. 
My people need it more than any other people. My people have been lied to, crushed, and oppressed. Oppre crushed, oppressed. Their history has been stolen. Their head has been chopped off. They are sumun bukmun amyun. They are dumb, deaf, and blind. They are the true Hiram of death. They are the children of Israel. They are everything that the world needs. So when the black people stop getting oppressed and killed and slaughtered, then the world will stop getting oppressed and killed and slaughtered. We are the elders of planet Earth. Like it or not, subscribe or unsubscribe, friend or be friend, I could care less because I eat every day till the day I go in the dirt. I eat. Ain't none of y'all stopping me from eating because Krishna feeds me from hand to mouth. And once again, to the Bangladeshi community, y'all better chill with what y'all are doing over there in the East. America's about to fall. So all of y'all people receiving your little arms, your money from America is gonna dry up because the world is starting to reject this fiat, fake ass US currency with these European faces who came to this country and stole the land from the indigenous people. Everything's about to flip. A star always goes nova before it dies. Look at how the Europeans are acting around the planet. They are going supernova right now in so many different ways. All respect to my good European brothers out there, my good European sisters out there, my good Muslims, my good Bangladeshis, but for your assholes, your time is coming. Your time is coming and a, a person will rise because that's in the scripture that Michael will stand for his people at the end of time. And Elijah the messenger would come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I'm telling you Trump and Clinton don't have no knowledge, man. They don't have the necessary proper knowledge to guide us into a utopian state of being. You first of all, you need somebody who doesn't eat meat so that they can understand higher concepts. These meat eaters with all of that cholesterol in their body and their brain, they don't have the necessary brain tissue to really think on a higher platform. They can only think up to a certain level, I'm telling you. Don't let their polished act, don't let their billions of dollars stolen from Haiti fool you. An animal is an animal, and a rich animal is just a rich animal. I pray for this planet. I pray for the diaspora. I pray for the living entities. I even pray for the goddamn devil. I pray for my enemy. Because I know that he's a Jiva Atma covered in a form of material energy that causes him to be stupid. And we tired of stupidity on this planet Earth. The people are tired. People, you know how many millions of people will not vote? Whether it's right or wrong, a lot of people ain't gonna vote this year. Cause then, no matter who you vote for, you voting for They Live. Go watch the movie They Live. How many times I gotta tell y'all, watch the yes, Rowdy Roddy Roddy, Roddy Piper with the sunglasses. Oh, this is a half an hour video. Why should this be a half an hour video? Cause I could talk for a million years about the ills of society. But we gotta address the root. We can't we can't stop homeless shelters from coming to our hood. We gotta stop the condition. When we gonna boost the education? When we gonna teach our kids real education? Anyway, man, listen, I gotta go to work so I don't be in the next one in the shelter system. Hare Krishna, everybody. Be blessed. Like I said, today's election day. Today is the beginning of the end. Every day is the beginning and end for the goddamn devil. As long as we are under the mercy of Lord Jagannath. <laughs> Hare Krishna, my people. Talk again, all right? One love. Hare. Okay, I've been pressing stop. I hate when this happens, right? Okay, let me try something different. This always happens.